open house for the September 27 through 30 transmission line shutdown. My name is Kathleen Baxter and I'm a public information officer with the city of Everett. This meeting is being recorded to capture public comments and will be posted on the transmission line maintenance webpage at everettwa.gov slash TLM. In order to get a clear recording, it's important that everyone follow the following protocols. We ask that all public attendees have their microphones muted unless called upon to speak. The meeting moderator will mute any open mics outside the question and answer period to help avoid disruption. We invite and encourage your questions. You may add questions into the chat during the presentation, although we'll wait to answer questions until the Q&A period. Only one person will be allowed to speak at a time. When called upon, speak clearly and give your full name before continuing. You can also type your comments into the chat box and we will read those out during the question and answer period. Please keep the chat and comments civil and respectful and stay on topic of the water transmission shutdown. The city reserves the right to mute or re remove any participant who is not able to follow these protocols or introduces uh, disruptive or unacceptable um, behavior or speech. And Kelly Frazee, our public information specialist with the Public Works Department, will now go over some tips on how to navigate Teams. Yes, thank you. We would just like to highlight some of the features that are available in this virtual open house that will be useful throughout the meeting, especially during the Q&A sec section. And Kathleen, if you could go back one slide for me. We are going to be using chat to share resources and you also may submit questions through chat that will be answered during the Q&A section. Uh, for those of you that are joining by phone, uh, you can find the resources that we're sharing by chat on the project website, which is everettwa.gov backslash TLM. That's E-V-E-R-E-T-T-W-A dot G-O-V backslash TLM. And that TLM stands for Transmission Line Maintenance. And if you um, are joining us and can see the screen, if you take a look at the bottom left, you will see how to uh, use the chat feature. And so if you click the icon that looks like the text bubble, that will bring, uh, it will open the chat window. And at the bottom of the chat window, there's a space that you can type in your questions. Once you've typed in your question, you'll either hit enter or the little icon that looks like a paper airplane and we will receive your question. Do know that uh, everybody that is in the meeting that is looking at the chat would be able to see the question that you submitted. We also have the option for you to raise your virtual hand as you'll see in the image that is on the bottom right. Um, this is something that is going to be primarily used during the Q&A section. Um, if it is your hand is raised earlier, we are going to be waiting until that time to answer questions. And then next slide, please. This uh, Teams also offers the option to turn on captioning. And in order to turn on this feature, as you see in the bottom left picture, there's the line of the three horizontal dots. Um, if you click on that, that opens up a drop down menu and on that drop down menu, you will see the option to turn on live captions. With that, I'm turning it back over to you, Kathleen. Thank you, Kelly. Public Works staff will give you a brief presentation on the project, how to prepare, how to avoid future service interruptions and how to stay informed then we will have time to take your questions. Before we get started, let me introduce you to our project team. First, I'm Kathleen Baxter, your host, as I said, and public information officer for Public Works. I'm assisted by public information specialist, Kelly Frazee, who will act as our moderator dur during the Q&A portion of the meeting. Then Suhail Nasser, utilities engineering manager, and Jeff Mars, operations superintendent, both with the city of Everett. There are public works staff who will discuss the details of the project. And we have Derek Pell, 
Northwest Regional Manager uh, with us from the Department of Health to answer and address any water quality questions you may have. And now Suhail will give us an overview of the project. Thank you, Kathleen. <clears throat> so I'd like to start by the reason why, why are we even doing this project? Uh, so the city of Lake Stevens is extending 91st Avenue Southeast uh, to the south, crossing uh, our three transmission lines that are in an easement over there. And in order to do to build the road, they will need to put at 17 feet of uh, fill on top of our pipelines, which necessitated the need to raise these pipelines and uh, place them a little bit at a higher elevation. So that's the major reason why we need to do this project. Uh, as I said before, we have three transmission lines that uh, run in the corridor east to west. They provide water to uh, the vast majority of uh, Snohomish County. And uh, two of those three luckily don't have any uh, services at, connected to them, so they will have no impact uh, on anybody during the shutdown. We've already replaced one of them, and we're going to be replacing the second one next week. And then the transmission line three, which will have impact on the residents over there uh, would be replaced uh, towards the end of September. So uh, next slide, Kathleen. So the location of the project itself is 91st Avenue Southeast and, uh, and Southeast and 20th Street Southeast. Uh, the area that is impacted, uh, which was shown on the previous slide, basically goes all the way between 79th Avenue Southeast and 157th Avenue Southeast. There used to be 70 services impacted, uh, but I was just informed uh, half an hour ago that uh, we have now 69 services because one of the residents uh, elected to uh, join the PUD and uh, we uh, they are no longer connected to the to the transmission line. So that's a good thing. Uh, so this is uh, the brief summary of what the, the purpose of the project and the reason for the project. And now I'm going to turn it over to uh, Jeff Mars, who's our uh, operations superintendent, and he will give an overview uh, of the customer impacts uh, due to this project. Jeff, next slide. Thank you, Suhail. Um, so what I'd like to talk about is the impacts um, to this shutdown and, and what you can expect um, as a result of, of a shutting the transmission line down and how you can prepare uh, for, for being out of water for up to 72 hours. Um, service interruptions are part of being connected to the water transmission line. Um, it is routine for us to do maintenance on the transmission line and being a direct connection on the transmission line when we have to shut it down, um, you are affected by that. For this particular outage, um, we're asking folks to be prepared to be out of water for up to 72 hours. Um, we're going to talk about how to keep your water service safe during that shutdown and the steps take to take when returning to service. So following the 72 hours, bringing the transmission line back in service and the steps you need to take for when water is restored to your residence. Next slide, please. So how to prepare. On average, um, individuals use 80 to 100 gallons per person per day of water. So for planning purposes, Think of personal hygiene needing to use at least one gallon per person per day. Every time we flush our toilet, which on average we do about five times per day per person, that takes about one to two gallons per flush with the low flow toilets. And also keep in mind that you need water for cooking, washing your dishes, um, irrigation, taking care of your animals and et cetera. Next slide. Can you go? Back one. So understanding that this shutdown is going to be for three days, um, we are providing a uh, tanker truck at the Cavalero Hill Dog Park near 79th Avenue Southeast. This truck will be on site Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. and we'll have a City of Everett um, employee there to assist with providing you water. This water is uh, determined to be non-potable or non-drinkable water. Now, the reason we classify it as non-potable water is because 
the tanker truck that we're holding the water in is not adequately disinfected um, to, to continue to keep it potable water. We get the water from our um, from our water mains um, at, a, at a safe location, but because of the fact that it's in the tanker truck, um, that's where it becomes non-potable. However, in the chat box, um, we just included a link to a document um, that um, provides instructions um, for how to treat your drinking water uh, for emergency use. So if you needed to use this water for emergency use other than for non-potable um, reasons, there are steps there you can take to um, use that water um, for other uses. When you do, if you do decide to take uh, advantage of this um, resource, um, you need to bring your own water containers with you uh, to the location. Um, we don't care what size containers you have or you know how you get them there. Um, we'll fill them up for you, but please bring your own water containers as we will not have any of them on hand uh, to give you. Next slide. So for protecting your water service, when we shut down the transmission line, we will isolate the water meter uh, the valve at the water meter at each of your individual residents. We also ask that you please close your toilet valves that is located behind your toilets, typically on the wall, and only flush when necessary. Also shut off the water heater valve located near the top of your water heater, um, or in some, some fashion, depending on your individual circumstance. Do not use um, clothes washers, dishwashers or other water appliances, as well as outside hose bibs. We'd also ask that you cover or mark any faucets within your uh, residence to remind you that the water is off and to not turn those on. That can help with, with um, uh, reducing the amount of air in your system and also uh, make it easier when bringing the water back uh, to your home. Next slide. So returning to service. Um, in order to, to keep up to date with what's going on with the project, um, we ask that you sign up to receive project updates or check our website frequently as we'll be posting updates at everettwa.gov slash TLM. That will provide you the most up-to-date information uh, as, as we're going through this project. Also, when water is restored to your home, we ask that you run each inside cold water faucet for several minutes until all of the air is out of the line and the water is running clear. For some, this may take up to 30 minutes. Also, any valves at the toilet valves and your hot water valves can be turned back on and any signs on your faucets can be removed as well. If you have any questions or concerns about your water or water quality, please call our dispatch number at 425-425. 257-8821. This number is staffed 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and we can provide you the uh, uh, answers to your questions, or if you need additional resources, we can get those coming for you. Next slide. And with that, I'm going to turn this back over to Suhail, and he can talk about future, uh, avoiding future interruptions. Thank you, Jeff. So as I said before, we have this transmission line three shutdown is a really significant shutdown for, for the city of Everett. We take it very seriously. This uh, transmission line provides on average about 20 million gallons per day of potable water. Um, and the pressure in the, in the transmission line, depending on your location, um, uh, is somewhere varies between 20 and 80 PSI. And uh, this line provides water to over 150,000 residents of Snohomish County. So, so we take uh, shutting it down very seriously. Next slide. So what do we do? What can we do to prevent uh, service interruptions in the future? Uh, any, any household that is connected directly to the transmission line, as Jeff said, uh, is basically uh, uh, in uh, could could potentially uh, be uh, out of water when we do service uh, on our transmission lines or when we have to shut them down. So uh, next slide. 
So the best way to avoid future interruptions, other short of have provided your own storage, uh, would be to connect to a nearby Group A uh, water distribution system. In in the area around the project, the uh, that would be the uh, getting water from the PUD. They do have a water main in uh, 20th Street, and they could uh, you could transfer your service from the city, and we do actually encourage you to do that. And uh, currently, the PUD is waiving two major fees associated with that transfer, and those two fees uh, add up to $7,855 currently. So if, if you do choose to do that, uh, your responsibility will be somewhere around $1,500 for a meet water meter and the connection of that water meter to the PUD line. And also you need to uh, do your own uh, service relocation from the meter to your house. So that's $1,500 plus the cost to do the service relocation. If you are interested in that program, um, all you have to do is just contact the PUD at 425-397-3000. That's 425-397-3000 and let them know that you are an Everett transmission line customer and that you would like to uh, transfer to the uh, to the PUD and they will uh, walk you through the process. Next slide. So why would you want to do that? Let's talk about a little bit some of the benefits uh, of doing this. Other than the, uh, the potential savings that the PUD is, is offering at this time. Uh, it's source reliability. Then next time we have to do a shutdown, you will not be impacted. You will have enough water to, to, to carry you through the shutdown. Uh, out of their storage facilities and their uh, reservoirs. Uh, the other thing indicated that before that, depending on your location, your water pressure from the transmission line could vary from 20 PSI as low as 20 PSI up to uh, 80 PSI. So by getting your water for the PUD, that water pressure would be more consistent and would be most likely would be higher, somewhere around 40, 50, 60 PSI. Uh, again, also with the with the PUD, they have uh, fire hydrants uh, on their systems that uh, will that will be uh, that will provide fire protection, which might uh, in some cases uh, lower your insurance uh, home insurance bill. And the last uh, bullet is that it will simplify our operation of the transmission lines, which makes it more efficient, and then we'll be able to to provide better service to everybody. So those are some of the benefits. And uh, now, next slide, please. Uh, I'm going to give it back to Jeff to talk uh, about the shutdown uh, schedule. Jeff. Thank you, Sunil. So I want to give you all a um, summary of what the uh, project schedule will look like and when uh, you can expect impacts to our transmission line being shut down. Um, so starting Monday, September 27th at 10 p.m., our crews will isolate valves and begin draining the transmission line. At that time, you'll start to experience um, service interruption. It takes our crews about 12 hours to drain the segment of pipeline that, that we need to drain in order to, uh, to facilitate this work. Um, Tuesday, September 28th, around five to six o'clock in the morning, uh, we will hand the pipeline over to the contractor so that they can begin their work to relocate and replace that segment of transmission line. They will work from Tuesday through Wednesday um, replacing that segment of pipeline. Then on Thursday, September 30th, once the project is complete, the, the, the contractor will turn the pipeline back over to the city and our crews will start refilling the pipe. That is also a long process in getting the pipe um, repressurized and flushed and then going around and opening up all of the services, uh, service connections that we've isolated as part of our shutdown. We anticipate that by 10 p.m. on the 30th that service will be restored. I do want to note that all times are approximate and are dependent upon the conditions of the project. So these could shift accordingly uh, depending on the schedule. Next slide. And I'm going to turn it back over to Kathleen on how you can stay informed on this project. Thanks, Jeff. 
We want to make sure you know that we're committed to keeping you up to date on the project status for the duration of the shutdown, including notifying you when service is restored. Updates will be posted to our website, as we've said before, everettwa.gov slash TLM, where you may also subscribe to receive text or email alerts. As an accessibility option for those with sight impairments, the City Alert Sense application is available to call a telephone and provide a spoken message. To access this option, call or email Jenny Long at 425-257-8863 or email her at jlong at everettwa.gov. That's J-L-O-N-G at E-V-E-R-E-T-T-W-A dot G-O-V. Everett's 24-hour dispatch can also assist you in signing up for alerts at 425-257-8821. Now Kelly will moderate the question and answer portion of our meeting. Thank you. We invite and encourage your questions. Please remember to keep the conversation polite and respectful and on the topic of the transmission line shutdown. In just a moment, we'll start by um, answering questions. If anybody has ones that you prefer to write into chat. And then after that, we will call on attendees who have their hand raised. And then followed by that, we will offer a time for attendees who are joining us by telephone to ask questions. Um, remember that this meeting is being recorded. And so please do not provide any personal information um, when you ask your questions other than your name. So with that, are there any questions? Um, if you're going to be writing them in the chat, um, please go ahead and do so. And I could also take questions um, if you'd like to raise your virtual hand. Remember that is um, near the top. Um, it looks like a smiling face with a hand up and that will raise your virtual hand. And for our phone-in callers, there are just a few more steps. So right now, for those of you that are dialing in by telephone, you have um, been automatically muted, but what you can do is press star six. And when you press star six, I will be able to see on my end that you are unmuted and I will call on you by using a portion of your phone number. And then for those of you that are uh, dial-in callers, um, what we ask is that you do state your name before you ask your question. And I just had a hand up from Brenda. Brenda, do you have a question? And I do not see Brenda. Brenda's hand was up and now I do not see her in the list. So she might have gotten disconnected. And right now it does look like all of those that are joining us well, by telephone God. remain muted. Excuse me. And we'll definitely give you some time to think about it if you are generating your questions. But remember, all of us are here as a resource and happy to help. And um, as you may have heard of in school, if you have that question, it's almost certain that somebody else does too. So I have a question in the chat that says, what is the purpose of our, us turning our toilets off? Jeff, <clears throat> Jeff you want to take that question? Yeah. Um, so the purpose of, of turning the toilets off, again, that's a recommendation. Um, and it, again, what we're really looking at is protecting your uh, water service lines. Um, and when we depressurize, um, 
water service lines, then we we run a higher vulnerability of having cross connect issues or backflow incidents. And so isolating those valves reduces the risk of any sort of backflow incident that you might have with your toilets. Also, uh, just to remind you that we will be going to each individual service that's affected by the shutdown and isolating the valve at the meter as well. And we have another question in the chat. Um, is it true that if you are currently connected to PUD water in Lake Stevens, you are unaffected by this shutdown? Yeah, this is so here. Yes, that is true. That is true. And another question in the chat, is that the same if we just turn off the main valve in the house? You could also turn off the main valve in your house. Again, the, these are just recommendations that we ask people to do, uh, but if you have a whole house isolation valve, you could use that as well. These are all great questions. I am going to check our list of um, our telephone participants again. Um, as a reminder, if you press star six on your phone, that will unmute you and I'll know that you have a question. We have a question in the chat. Are we affected if we live right off of Cavallero? Okay, well, <clears throat> this is Suhail again. We have sent out flyers to the customers that would be affected. So if you have received that flyer, then yes, you would be affected. If you have not received it uh, and you're not sure whether you should have received it, uh, then please you can send us, uh, contact us, and then uh, we we'll give us your address and then we can look it up and let you know. And Suhail, this is Kathleen. I just want to note, please don't give us your address here, but no. call our dispatch number at 425-257-8821 and they can help you work through that. And I see we have a question or a comment coming through chat right now from Ryan. And I also do have two of the um, phone-in participants that have unmuted. So let's answer uh, Ryan's question. So what is the best way for people to know when water is back on? And then we'll take the, um, the telephone questions. Okay, Jeff, would you take yeah. that answer? Um, so the best way for knowing when your water is restored is to um, keep track of the project updates through our um, through our website and our notifications that we had listed. Um, also, um, we will you, you will have um, service crews out uh, restoring service um, to each individual house as well. Um, but again, the best way to 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 stay up to date on that is is to be connected with uh, getting our alerts and also checking our website for project updates. We will be keeping that updated current um, as we get new information regarding the project. I have a, a telephone participant with the last four numbers of 5908. Would you please state your name and ask your question? Hi there, my name is Angie Thompson and um, I'm just curious, We Previously, in our small little district, um, uh, one of the neighbors has tried to get onto PUD and multiple times has been told no. And so I just was curious, do you guys know, um, does this change that at all? Or is, is, um, is that something that we still might come across? Well, without knowing the location of your house or, or uh, there might not be a water main that uh, fronts your house, so uh, the PUD would not be able to provide you with that service unless you are willing to extend that uh, water main to front your property. So maybe that might be the case. Uh, if you if you send us again, if you send us your address, uh, 
then uh, we'll look into it and uh, give you a better answer. Great, thanks. And then a uh, telephone participant with the last four numbers ending on 5363. Would you please state your name and ask your question? And I see you are unmuted, but I recognize that that might not necessarily mean that you have a question. Um, so we'll wait um, a few more seconds in case you do. Okay, and they they are muted. Um, so any last questions through um, chat, hand raising, um, and then of course for the uh, phone and callers, I can also see if you unmute. So it looks like we do have one from Mike B that says, how do we know if our water system is actually affected? This is Suhail. Uh, I'm gonna, uh, we have sent you, uh, we have sent flyers and emails uh, to, uh, to the, uh, uh, services that would be impacted and I think Kathleen maybe you can speak a little bit more about the notifications that we've sent those will be the folks that will actually be impacted by the shutdown right I would this is Kathleen I would confirm we did send um, mailed notices and postcards to those addresses that we have identified as impacted by the shutdown can't guarantee they've been received um, Lee Brandt is on the call and also was involved in that process but Yes, we reached out to everyone that we know would be affected um, whose address we have. Okay, and Mike, if you do send, if you haven't received that and you do send us your email, your address uh, in, in the private chat, I guess, to Kathleen, then we can verify if if your address is going to be affected. You'll receive it. Okay, great. Are there additional questions uh, in that are going to be placed in the chat? So uh, you may either put your questions in the chat or you can raise your virtual hand. It looks like uh, Mike B, uh, would you like to ask a question? Yes, I would. Can you hear me? Yes. So uh, our water system has four households on it. They're about a quarter mile from the meter. Should I be shutting the water off at the meter to prevent all of that water to drain out? Jeff, do you want to handle that question? Um, so you have four you have four houses down downstream of and you just have the one meter. Yes, that is correct. Um, and that's that's your that, that's your meter. Um, then I would I would isolate that um, at, at that point if, if you're concerned about the downstream houses. Have the downstream houses been uh, communicated that they'll that they're affected by the shutdown? No, I was going to be waiting until after this meeting. OK, um, I'll also add Jim Spooner. Did you have any other uh, comments on that? Since you guys are kind of handling the field stuff. You're muted, Jim. Hi, Mike. This is Jim Spooner. I'm the maintenance supervisor for the water department for the city of Everett. Um, we're going to have crews on site at each individual meter, um, and we're going to be shutting those off as well. So if the meter you're talking about is a city owned meter, we will probably have that shut down for you. That's great because it's extremely hard to shut it off. <laughs> Yeah, we um, we've gone around and identified all the uh, places to shut off within the affected area, so we should be able to get it off. And then when the water gets turned on, I would assume you're going to go around and turn those meters back on. Um, there will be a period of time, I guess, from when the uh water uh get uh, fills the line all the way up to those meters correct we we will not turn the individual meters back on until water has been restored to the transmission line 
and uh, we're ready to go. So uh, we're going to wait for it to get filled and then get verification that uh, we're good to go and then we'll come back and turn everybody back on. Is the time frame that um, you provided uh, that I know is somewhat flexible, is that uh, does that include turning those meters on or do you anticipate that uh, at 10 p.m. the water will be turned back on and then there will be some time before those meters are shut up, turned on? So I believe that time frame includes us turning everything back on. So um, I would recommend to keep an eye on the um, transmission line website and the updates can be pushed out because it, it may run longer or it may go shorter. OK, thank you very much. Thank you, Mike. Uh, it looks like our next question is uh, from Eric Reiner. And Eric, you are muted. And Eric, I am going to unmute you just in case sometimes um, sometimes computers are a little glitchy and hard to turn that off. And I'm not able to unmute you either. So Eric, if you are having a problem with unmuting, you could add, add your question into the chat section. And it does look like he has logged off, so he might log back in for us to get his question. And are there any other? Well, how about this? Let's go. We have a, a dial in number um, uh, that is uh, 425754. If you would like to ask a question, oh, it looks like you have your mic disabled. And so if you could give us your name and your question, please. All right, um, how about, uh, we have the question from Mike B in the chat. Do you still recommend that we close our valves in the house for hot water, et cetera, if the meter will be shut off and water them will not drain? We do still recommend that um, just as an added uh, safety measure uh, to just overall protect your water service um, during that shutdown. And uh, I have a question in the chat for the call in number. Um, let's see. April, would you be able to add the call in number into the chat? Yeah, give me just a moment. I can do that for you. Thank you very much. And. Let's see, Mike, you have your virtual hand up. I'm going to lower your hand, but if you have another question, feel free to raise it. And right now, again, any questions that you have for chat or, um, or you can raise your virtual hand and we will call on you. And Eric, we're getting you that. Oh, here we go. Oh, thank you, Mike B. And we're giving Eric a moment to join. I know he has a question. Mm -hmm. 
So the question is, will the slides be available, available. for download? I, uh, we are posting the recordings of the presentation and I believe we can make the slides available as well. Um, Kathleen, please correct me if that um, is not accurate. No, that's a great idea. We'll do that. All right, and we have our um, a call in participant 425328. Uh, if you have a question, please state your name and ask your question. Yeah, this is Eric Reiner. Uh, so I had some of the same questions that Mike had um, about we have a private water service with about seven or eight people on it. Um, and we have probably, I don't know, a half to a mile worth of piping. So you guys are going to shut off the meters at the transmission line. Would it be good for us to shut off all of the meters in our small water service so that we're not allowing that water to drain out and stir up sediment and all of that that's sitting in the lines currently? Jim? Yes. That would be great if you shut your meters off. That way we can keep the integrity of the water in the pipe. Thank you. And let's see, we'll wait about 30 more seconds to see if more questions come up. And then we'll remind you of how to get additional information. And um, you may or may not have noticed that earlier in chat, I shared two resources. One was the project website, and another was a fact sheet that is specifically for um, customers of Transmission Line 3 that will be impacted by the shutdown. So um, please um, take a look at those links at your, in, at your convenience. And I believe, Kathleen, that might be all of our questions if you would like to take it back. Oh, we might have just gotten one. Derek, oh, Derek. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Derek. I work with uh, Washington State Department of Health in the Office of Drinking Water. So I did want to just add that I think um, Everett's doing a great job in getting these messages out. Uh, a couple things I want to add is, um, if you are on the transmission main and you're part of this, this is a really good exercise for kind of emergency preparedness and resiliency. Um, we live in an area where, uh, you know, the big earthquake could hit at any point in time and being prepared for this is a really good idea. So this exercise about having uh, water stored and knowing your emergency response plan is a really good thing to practice. And this is practiced under a controlled scenario right here. So I think this is really good to think about. Um, I did want to mention that uh, it's great that Everett is providing that trucked water for uh, non-potable use. Um, just a clarification, I believe that that is, was filled with potable water, but the truck itself and the containers that you may transfer that water into, we don't have control over that too much. So that's why we're calling it non-potable. Uh, so I just wanted to uh, clarify that and then also point you to a reference that I will uh, I'll put a link in the chat about um, uh, a publication we have about treating drinking water for emergency use. So if you were to use that trucked water and you bring it in a container back to your home, uh, you can either boil that water or you could uh, add disinfectant yourself and you can see that in this uh, publication that I will post in the chat. And that's all I wanted to share for you today. And I, I really appreciate this meeting and the opportunity to connect with everybody. Take care. Thank you so much for that, Derek. And handing it back over to Kathleen. Great, thank you so much, Kelly. Uh, on behalf of the project team, I wanna thank everyone for taking time to meet with us. Please visit everettwa.gov forward slash TLM for the latest project information and to sign up to receive our updates. We encourage you to contact Everett's 24-hour dispatch at 425-257-8821 if you have questions or concerns prior to or during the shutdown. This concludes the Transmission Line 3 open house.